We are going to cover inferring and specifying types. So the interesting thing about Swift is that Swift um, can, depending on the value, guess what its type is. Um, and I can show you really quickly. Let me just go ahead and type inferring types so that we know what's going on underneath. So in this case, I'm just going to use the code that, Swift, that the playgrounds provide me. Uh, in this case, the variable str is actually inferring the type from the actual value. In this case, hello playground is a string. And one way we can check is we can do, uh, we can actually click option and then plus click. Um, on the actual variable name. As you notice, the variable name changes colors and the pointer turns to a question mark. So if you click that, it'll pop up what its declaration is or what, what it is. So the variable str is a string and that's correct. It is a string. Um, and then if you want to find out more, you can click here and it will tell you what you need to know. Or if you just want to look it up, you can do that too. <laughs> um, so, the, so, like I said, the very interesting thing about Swift is that it will guess what, what the type is. So it, another example is with this type of variable um, named integer, and we will give it the value of four. So let's guess it's most likely going to be an int. So if you do option plus click, it is an int, which is absolutely correct. Let's try, let's see if float 12.2, let's see what it infers. So option plus click, oh, nope, it's a double. So you see, it inferred that it was a double. Uh, and you know, then that's, that's where actually specifying types is uh, comes in at because sometimes you need to know what it's going to be. And in that case, I thought it was going to be a float, but obviously it wasn't. So what we can do is we can take um, the variable and then we specify it by doing colon float and then equal it to 12.2. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we do option plus click, and there you go, it's actually a float. Uh, another thing that we can, and that actually really helps to, it helps the compiler know, okay, this value is not a double like I assumed, it's actually a float. So let's click here. And here we go. See how I assigned float to the, to the data type of float. <laughs> um, now it's not good to actually type out a keyword that actually exists. Um, you know, it's it's not good. So let's let's give this a different name. <laughs> uh, An integer. Okay, I don't want to teach you the wrong thing here. <laughs> All right, so here you click a float, and sure enough, it's a float. So that's that, again, is kind of an issue with inferring types, is if you don't specify, the compiler will guess what it is. And sometimes that's fine, especially if you know, okay, the values that are going to go into this variable are always going to be this particular type, no matter what, then you can infer all day long. But if you don't know, or there might be a possibility where in this case, where you assume that a variable is going to contain a particular number and with float and double, since they're so similar, um, well, they're not really that similar, but they accept um, decimals and whatnot, um, that can be a huge issue. So um, another thing I want to also kind of go over is making sure that you pass in variables that have the same type. So for example, we'll take a float, 
our variable a float. And let's assign it to specify float. We should get an error message or not. Yes, we do. Okay. And can you guess why we get an error message? Let's see if your guess is correct. The reason why we got an error message is because a float is, is of type double. If we click here, sure enough, it's type double. Specify float, on the other hand, is a float. So that's one of the issues where you need to you know, make sure that you're specifying your types is that you cannot assign one data type to another. It just doesn't happen. They have to have the same data type. And let's see what the error message says. Yes, it says, cannot assign a value of type float to type double. So there you go. That's why you can't, because it just won't accept it. But you can convert it, though. So since we know specify float is a float, we can change it to a double. Oopsie, that's not what I want to do. <laughs> See what happens. And there you go. See, it's specified. We, we convert and specify float to a double. And if you notice, what's really interesting about this is the value. So that conversion kind of messed with the value a little bit. I mean, that's one of the things that you're going to have to deal with, I guess. But you, there's ways you can, you can go around this, um, and I won't go into it in this video, but I kind of just wanted to show you that you can change the value of something. Um, let's maybe do it at zero, Let's see what happens. There you go, 12 and 12. <laughs> um, but then again, yeah. So make sure that your types are of the same type. Uh, don't always depend on inferring types. All right, so that's the end of this video. Code on my friends.